Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and the last week or so I have been going around and painstakingly cleaning every single one of my house plants, which is the most time consuming part of caring for all of my plant collection. People always assume that it's watering my plants that takes the most time, but that is a breeze in comparison to the maintenance of taking care of all of my house plants. So I'm gonna go through today and I'm gonna show you guys how I have been cleaning my plants, which the most important goal of cleaning my plants is not only to make my plants look clean and beautiful, but to make sure that they are pest free, which is something that I deal with in my home and I'm sure many of you deal with is pest hiding throughout your plants. And while many pests aren't going to completely annihilate your plants, you might find that there are a couple hiding here and there, which just could be hindering your plants from growing to their fullest potential. And I can tell you uh, confidently that I feel like we're going to find at least one pest hiding on all of these plants here. So I have this lovely Aglianema chocolate, this beautiful uh, Hoya Carnosa, and then the ever so stunning Stromanthe Sanguinea Trio Star right here. Uh, I might do a couple more than this, but these are the three that I am going to begin with today as my focal points. So let's go ahead and get started. As much as you might love to see my beautiful face throughout this project, I think I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer because that might make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So first and foremost, I want to say that when I do my plant maintenance, I like to make sure that my soil is dry and it's time to water my plants because it just makes it a lot easier for me because after I'm done this, I'm either going to throw this plant in the shower or in the sink, depending on the size. And it would just be kind of uh, irresponsible of me, let's say, to go ahead and give this plant a good watering in the sink or the shower. If the plant is already well watered, then that's just going to cause more problems than not, as many of us are familiar with the issues that over watering uh, can give to our plants, specifically this aglianema. That would be like practically a death sentence. So the soil is dry, it's ready to go ahead and get watered. And first and foremost, you are going to want to make sure your plants are dusted. My plants are, I think, at least decently dusted, which is surprising for me because I always sit down to film my YouTube videos and my plants are completely riddled in dust. Uh, but what I'm seeing uh, with my plant here is that there is a little bit of... Um, like sticky substances on some of the leaves. So I'm assuming that we might find like a, like some scale or some mealy bug, just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see very well. Let me get it like a little bit closer. You can see on this leaf right here. Oops, sorry. Now we're not even remotely in frame. You can see on this leaf right here, or maybe you can't, there's like a little bit of residue on the leaf and you can kind of see it, but it looks like dried water splotches. So yeah, there could have been some mealy bug in the vicinity of this or some scale. Or it could be something else completely different. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just go ahead and start cleaning these leaves. Oh, looks like we got a mealy bug right there. Okay, so we found at least one mealy bug. Um, it's just a little fuzzy one, it's nothing too big. It looks like it was just maybe even some leftovers from an old mealy bug or another one on this plant or something like that. But yeah, we are gonna go ahead and start off by making our little uh, mixture that we are going to clean off our plants with, which is fortunately made with stuff that you probably already have in your home. So this mixture is really simple. We're gonna make it right here at the sink. I'm gonna use a glass. You can use whatever, bowl, measuring cup, whatever you want. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of rubbing alcohol. It's like a centimeter, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I'm using 70% today. It does not matter if you're using the 90 something percent. I forget exactly the number. So we have a little bit of rubbing alcohol in here. I'm gonna add just like a drop of soap, maybe two. I am using uh, Mrs. Meyers lavender scented soap however i always hear you should be using unscented soap but it's lavender like it's already a plant but um i think if you are being the best plant parent you can be you should be using an unscented soap um i think people like to use castile soap a lot but i use this lavender soap all the time and i've never had any issues and then we're just going to fill it up with a little bit of water from our sink we're going to do roughly a ratio of one part rubbing alcohol to six parts water but um, it doesn't, you don't have to be exact. You don't have to be measuring it out. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, maybe just a little bit more. And the soap is not only going to help clean off our leaves, of course, but uh, it's going to help uh, suffocate any bugs that are issues on our plants. And the alcohol is, of course, not only going to clean, but also kill the bugs because they just can't deal with the alcohol. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. And 
I'm gonna be using a couple paper towels today. I can already hear you guys in the comments telling me that that's a waste. Um, my issue with using rags when I'm cleaning off pests is that the pests are just going to pile up on the rags and I'm gonna constantly be having to clean them or switch between rags. So I'm just gonna be very mindful and use as little amount of paper towels as I can today. But um, if you're using a larger project, you could use a sponge. That's my dish sponge, so I'm not gonna use that. That would probably be a little bit easier to keep cleaner than a rag when it comes to like mealybug or scale piling up on your rags depending on how bad your infestation is but yeah I'm just gonna use a couple paper towels today and also I should be using gloves because this alcohol is going to dry out my skin like the dickens but um I don't have it so we're just going to make do with what we have so let's go back over to our plants I found some honey grow napkins so I'm gonna start off with these before I move on to my paper towel stash but um, you're going to see, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to thoroughly clean off the top side of the leaf because that's where you are likely going to have your leaves be more dirty and where any of those dusts and residues could be hiding up. But also make sure that you get the bottom side of the leaves because that's where pests are more likely going to be hiding out. And you might be thinking, can I just avoid doing this one leaf at a time and spray them with a spray bottle? And my answer to that is no, you can't because you're not going to be able to clean off these leaves nearly as thoroughly by just spraying them with the solution as you can by going through and individually cleaning off every single leaf, which like this leaf right here, you can see how much of that little sticky residue it has on it. So this is going to clean it off completely and I'm going to have to worry a lot less in the end and put in a lot more, eff a lot less effort, I mean, in the future, putting in more effort now, absolutely. Uh, but you know, one plant just takes a couple of minutes and it's definitely worth it in the end. So this is that leaf that had that little mealy bug on it. Only seeing one mealy bug so far in this plant, but I'm sure there's probably a couple more hiding in the creases here. So we will also make sure that we get in there and just kind of, I usually just like squeeze it over some of these and just let some of the fluid like kind of rest in the crevices. You don't want to overdo it. Like I'm not trying to water my plant with this alcohol and soapy water, but it's totally okay if some of this water gets into uh, my soil because I'm going to just be watering this plant anyway. So I'm sure that some of this uh, soap and alcohol is just going to get rinsed and flushed out the bottom. So nothing to worry about there. I did find one more mealy bug on this plant. So it's a good thing that we're going through and cleaning it off one by one. But as you can see now, I have all of the leaves cleaned off individually front and back. There's still some soap in the leaves. And now we are just going to let this plant sit and marinate, if you will. I'm just gonna let this chill for like five or 10 minutes with this cleaning solution on it. And then we're gonna take it over and we're gonna throw it in the shower and we're gonna rinse it off. But since we have a couple of minutes before that's gonna be ready, let's go ahead and tackle this next one. So this plant, this stromanthe, oh, we're gonna have to adjust the camera. Uh, this stromanthe has been living directly next to my Aglaonema chocolate. So if I found a couple of mealybugs on there, I'm assuming I'm gonna find some mealybugs on here and probably a couple more than just the one or two. Not seeing any yet, but we're gonna take a look. Um, first and foremost, I have this leaf right here plain green with some brown tipping. It's really not looking great. And I feel like once I remove this leaf, the rest of the plant's gonna be looking so much better. So let's go ahead and cut this down at the base. So now this plant looks 10 times better. I literally should have cut off that leaf weeks ago because now this looks like a literal work of art, which also like a little bit of kudos for me for being able to take care of uh, this stromanthe, which if you guys have been watching my channel, you might know that I'm like literally in love with this house plant, but I've never successfully been able to grow it. But my friend gave me some offshoots of her plant or a division of her plant that she's had for a couple years and it's been absolutely thriving. So yay for that. But let's go ahead and once again clean. I can see there's a little bit of uh, white right here on the leaves. I don't know exactly myself if that might be like from water situation or if that might be some mealybug, but we'll keep an eye out. I know in some of my prayer plants like my Calathea orbifolia that I have in my bedroom that the um, mealybugs really like to hide inside the new leaves before they unfurl and then they'll hide on the back of the leaves after that. So we'll flip the plant around. Oh, okay. So right here, do you see there's some mealybug on there? So Let's get this a little close up so you guys can see there is, I'm sorry, I'm going to be shaking while I'm holding this up, but there is a little, not juicy one, but a really fuzzy one right there. And you can see all those little white specks are baby mealybugs that are still developing. So let's quickly go ahead and 
clean that off as well as we possibly can. And now you might be understanding more why I'm like, I don't really like to reuse rags on my plants because I'm just gonna be spreading around these mealybugs if there's too many, which some of my plants, specifically the ones that have uh, brown scale issues, let me tell you, they are pretty gnarly. I'll see if I can find one for this video for your guys' enjoyment. But it looks like that was the only leaf that was really kind of harboring some mealybugs. The rest of this plant's looking pretty clean, which is good, but yeah, like I said, there's always going to be one hiding somewhere. They always seem to work their way through the cracks. And this is why I really prefer going through and wiping my plants besides just throwing them in the shower and expecting the water to take care of them, which that's a good start. Throwing them in the shower, if you have no other uh, sources of kind of, you know, uh, insecticidal soap or this little solution that I made here, a good start would definitely be just throwing your plant in the shower and giving it a really, really good rinse off, maybe taking a rag or a paper towel and going ahead and just kind of doing what I'm doing here, cleaning off the front and the backs of the leaves. It's not going to eradicate the problem by any means, but it's definitely going to keep it a little bit more at bay. But this one is definitely a quicker job than that Aglianema. This one has probably half the amount of leaves that that Aglianema has. And once again, let's just let this plant sit and marinate, and then I will be back in a couple minutes, and we're gonna take both of these plants into the shower to start off. All right, we are here in my shower. Can you tell from my little pile of perlite and leaves that I've been doing a lot of plant maintenance lately? So I am literally just going to water these one by one. Whenever I water my plants in here, I'll usually fill up the whole thing to the brim and use my watering can to kind of save on water a little bit. But I am going to just turn the shower on and let nature do its work. And I probably just ran that for like 15 to 20 seconds to just give it a good watering, clean off the leaves nicely. I don't want to damage the leaves, but my shower isn't that strong, so it's not going to do that. And then we'll go ahead and put the stromanthi under, give it a really quick rinse and watering. And there we go. Just 10, 15 seconds is all we need. Plant cleaned off. It's well watered, much more well watered with that quick shower than it would be if I was going around spot watering my plants. So let's go clean a few more. Let me see if I can find a couple that might be a little bit more riddled with pests. All right, so I have this Hoya right here and I was sitting at my desk earlier and I noticed that I, there was some mealybug hiding on this stem right here. If you can see that there are a few babies, those little white little fuzzy thingies that are working their way up the stem that I'm holding here. And there's probably a few more hiding, you can see in this crevice right here, that little fuzzy white thing is a mealybug. Hoyas are notorious for getting mealybug. In fact, a Hoya Bella, uh, my first Hoya Bella is what brought mealybug into my home and they have never left. And I had gone years before that without dealing with mealybugs. So now it's just part of my everyday plant routine, dealing with the mealybugs. So buyer beware, but um, I still love Hoya. I'm not gonna knock them for their mealybug issues, but we are just going to simply take, got a paper towel here, and I'm just going to pull around the stem and I'm just going to lightly go up. And I wanna be gentle because there's some new leaves on here. Sorry, doing this completely off camera. Uh, there are some new leaves on here. So I do wanna be gentle not to break them off, but if they are healthy enough, they should be staying in place, which it looks like they are. But I do wanna be mindful there because I am sure that with these new leaves, there are probably some mealybugs hiding there. So if you probably see, I'm just like squeezing some of the soap suds and solution just kind of on there to make sure that they are suffocating those damn mealybugs. And let's do the same with this one right here. So I'm gonna pull up lightly, slightly over those leaves. Same with these ones here. Actually, I might wanna be a little bit more gentle with these ones right here because they're a little bit more developed and probably more likely to pop off. I'm just going to give them some light cleaning, getting within the interior of the taco-shaped area of these leaves where those mealybugs are definitely going to be hiding out. And then let's just finish our way up here. And of course, let's go and get in these crevices here, which I'm just kind of squeezing over them lightly. Oh, broke a little leaf off, but that was a sad little leaf anyway, so it didn't even matter, but do you want to be gentle? I see I have some new growth right in here, so I definitely want to be kind of 
mindful there. And of course, I'm going to clean off these leaves in the same way that I was cleaning off the other leaves. Um, with the Hoyas, they are definitely going to be hiding less um, the pest, specifically mealybug, because that's what I'm mostly dealing with my Hoyas. They're not usually going to be hanging out on the leaves or on the back of the leaves. They're always, in my experience, going to be on the stems, in the crevices or cracks of the leaves that kind of just form as these get kind of tight with all these different leaves that appear on the stems. And then the most issues I have is on the new leaves, like these little ones that I have right here that are forming. So this is where I'm going to find most of the issue, but they are definitely going to be all over the Hoya as they really just have this really passionate love affair when it comes to my Hoya. We can see right in here, it's another mealybug. So let's just soak that one as much as we can with our solution. And then if we can't get it out, hopefully the um, water from the shower will go ahead and knock that guy free. But regardless, our solution should be taken care to not only suffocate him with that soap, but just straight up annihilate him with that alcohol. So I think that's a good enough cleaning for this Hoya here. So Hoyas are definitely much more fragile as you saw with the sleeve that popped off. Um, so you definitely wanna be a little bit more careful than I was being with my um, Aglaonema and my Stromanthe, but uh, still one that you're definitely going to wanna be very, very mindful to get into all of those cracks and crevices. So once again, I'm just going to leave this to marinate I feel like there's probably a better word than marinate, but I'm gonna put it aside, do one more plant. I have a hunch that I have this fern that's probably completely riddled with scale because I cleaned off a different fern a couple weeks ago that was also very riddled with scale. So, oof. So I have been purposely waiting to water this plant because I knew it needs a cleaning. So it's definitely going to look a little wilty today in comparison that it's going to look tomorrow after I go ahead and clean this and give it a watering. But this is my kangaroo paw fern, or my um, microsorum diversifolium, and I feel very correct that this plant is totally riddled with brown scale. Do you guys see that all over the backside leaves? Which is funny, because I was talking about that in a recent video, and someone was like, those are definitely spores on the back of your fern. Honey, those ain't no spores. These are brown scale and they are here to uh, slay. <laughs> so um, you can see this large one right here that I'm kind of breaking with my fingers. So I can just scratch them off if I want, but there are a lot of them. They're all hiding out along the like a vein or like rib of my leaves. So this is going to be a little bit more of an intense cleaning job. So let's go ahead and get right in there with this solution. I'm just gonna scrub, 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 scrub. I'm going to be much less gentle than I was being with my Hoya. Uh, this fern is a much more hardier fern. I would probably be second guessing whether I would be wanting to use this alcohol situation on a much finer fern, per se, like a maidenhair fern, uh, as this alcohol could dry out those very uh, thin, uh, leaves and kind of cause some issues maybe appearance wise. I am not speaking on experience. I am literally just guessing, but I'm not worried about this whatsoever with this hardier fern. So really just getting in there front and back. There are scale hiding all over this plant, but this alcohol should kill most of them. But my goal is really to clean off this plant because I really just don't want the scale still living there dead or alive. We have this fern frond right here that you can see all the little baby scales hiding in there, all those little tiny brown bumps. So once again, go in there. And there are other products that I use on my home. I often use, and I've talked about these in plenty of my other videos, um, Captain Jack's, which is a spinacid spray, which that's an important kind of spray to use if you're dealing with spider mites because spinacid is going to uh, be a miticide, which is very helpful because a lot of pesticides are for, or insecticides, I'm sorry, are for insects. And it just so happens that spider mites are not insects. So that's not gonna work. And I often like to use houseplant systemics, which is a powder, which is basically a chemical. And it'll just kind of, uh, you put it right in the soil and it will get absorbed up through the plant's uh, veins. And then any bugs that suck on the plants will die, which is a very helpful thing. But I'm also aware that that is not available in a lot of different countries, so. I figured that rubbing alcohol and soap and of course water are going to be available much more <laughs> readily. And this is straight up something that I use all the time. I'd say I honestly probably use this solution more often than I'm using 
my Captain Jacks or my Systemics, mainly because I don't have to buy this separately. Like I have to order a thing of Captain Jacks and I have to um, order Systemics, but I can just run downstairs to the CVS or the Rite Aid or what have it and get some rubbing alcohol and some dish soap and I am ready to clean off my plants. So these leaves, I'm sure you can tell. I have definitely been neglecting this. I did not realize <laughs> that this was bad. Like I assumed that there was a couple scale on here because the other fern, but this is all the way across the room uh, from my other fern. And I feel like I just featured this in one of my videos recently and it was not this bad, but goes to show kids how bad these infestations can get pretty quickly. I think that this brown scale actually came from my Natal Mahogany, which is across the room, like I said, but um, it really seems to find the plants that it loves. And I experienced that with some of my um, other plants. Like for example, I deal with thrips in my home, which are an absolute nightmare in comparison to uh, mealybug and scale. So I'm fortunate that I'm just dealing with this here, but I will find like thrips really love like the new leaves on my philodendron. So there could be a, a, one philodendron in my bedroom with new leaves that has thrips and another one out in my living room all the way across the room. But the thrips just seem to know where to go. This leaf right here, you can see once again, these hiding in here, all over the place. This is a really like waxy type of scale that like I said, you can really go at it with your finger, but I would guess that many of you might find that to be kind of gross. So you can just go ahead with your paper towel, your sponge, your rag, whatever you feel most comfortable with cleaning off your plants. This leaf right here, as you can see, it's very, very infested. You can see there's like literally a hundred scale just hiding here. And it's just a tiny little leaf. So I'm not even gonna bother with this one. I am just going to clip it right off at the base. You also need to be mindful with these stems here. The scale are absolutely going to hide there too. Ooh, I can see this one back here. I don't wanna remove that leaf because it's a really beautiful leaf, but there is this one stem right here that is just practically looks like it's blistering with the scale on it. I apologize, I'm sure that I'm not able to get this as well as I would like to, but it literally looks like the stem has blisters on it because it's so covered in very, very mature scale. So that's one I'm gonna have to make sure that I go in and yeah. So really gonna have to pay some close mind to this plant here. This is obviously going to be a much more intense cleaning job than the last few plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this plant remove some of these dead and dying leaves, and then I will be back with you guys in a moment. Obviously, this is a pretty intense attack of these um, brown scale here on my fern, and I'm sure many of you, or at least some of you, might find your fern looking, you know, kind of sad and wilted and covered in these scale and just be like, oh, I'm throwing it out, which, you know, you know, I would admit that I would do in some situations, but I really like the way that this looks. It's got a lot of character, and I know it looks really bad right now, but I feel so confident it's going to look fantastic after I go ahead and throw this in the shower um, and water it that I'm going to include a little snippet of what it looks like tomorrow, which has to be tomorrow because the day after is when this video is going to be posted in the morning, so just saying, but um, what is my limit? What is my threshold when it comes to dealing with pests and I would just get rid of something? Um, scale and mealybug, like I was saying, I think are a little bit more um, controllable. You're never gonna be able to really eradicate pests in my experience. It just kind of it seems to be something that kind of you gotta deal with as a plant parent. Um, but uh, if I was to find a plant that was totally riddled with maybe spider mites and the leaves were all, you know, pale and gross and splotchy and just covered in spider mite damage, I might go ahead and toss that. Or if I have a plant that's really dealing with the thrips very poorly, once again, I'm going to go ahead and just toss that and not even bother with it or maybe try taking a cutting of the plant and salvaging a cutting and really cleaning it off very well. But this fern, I see a lot of potential with this just because it's got some gross brown scale on it. I think um, it's going to be very easily treatable. Is all the scale going to be off of it and is this plant going to be back to normal after this situation? No, it's going to need at least another clean before I can say that this plant is nearly pest free and it might take even more than that, but I still think it's well worth it for this beautiful fern. It's just something that I feel like I have to deal with with a lot of my ferns, but I'm gonna go over this plant one more time just see, cause I see like a couple more just like larger scales that are hiding here and there. So ones that I can just go out with my fingers before I go ahead and get this in the shower. But as you can see, I really should have wore some gloves because my fingers are pruning up from that alcohol, just really drying them out. So I think it's time for me 
to about call it a day, but I'm just gonna let this sit a little bit longer. We're gonna go ahead and rinse it off in the shower and then um, hope for the best. I just finished giving these guys a nice rinse and a good watering. So now that I have all of my plant's leaves cleaned off of the cleaning solution and now that they're all well watered, I'm just going to let them sit here in my shower for the rest of the day or perhaps until tomorrow morning until they are dry and their planters are dry and their leaves are dry and all of that stuff and then put them back in their regular spaces in my home. And, you know, of course, ones like the Aglaonema and the Stromanthi that had minimal pest issues, uh, they are totally fine and I'm not going to have to give them another cleaning anytime soon other than my typical like weekly plant maintenance of just like dusting the leaves and whatnot and watering when it's time to water. But you know, the fern definitely going to need another cleaning in a week or so's time because that was disgusting. It was riddled with brown scale. It was very, very, uh, it was a situation to say the least. And the Hoya, as I do with all my other Hoyas, do have to keep a close eye in those crevices between the leaves and the stems because that's where those mealybugs really love to hide. And also those new leaves, as I'm sure you guys saw. Uh, so that is, how I've been cleaning my plants and taking care of them. And I really just wanted to share this method with you guys because I know that I have done videos in the past on plant or pest care, pest care, pest management. And as I said, some of the products are not available in every country, but this is something that I feel confident you can literally go to your local grocery store or drugstore and they're going to have everything available if you don't already have everything available in your home already. So that's gonna do it for today's video, cleaning my plants, plant maintenance, dealing with plant pests and whatnot. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.